folks, I'm afraid I'm going to have to bring you even more madness and mayhem from Stratford, East London, which occurred yesterday and which again was a video coming into my feed without me requesting it yesterday evening, concerns the charge that there's racism against black people in the Bible. There's another point that comes up later on, which I'll also discuss, which is how um, you know slavery is this terrible thing done by white Europeans and um, Muslims are the innocents. But first, we have to deal with this issue of of the Bible being racist. And there's this chap, Muslim fella, I mean, one of the guys calls him Mustafa at some point, so perhaps that's his name. And he's going on, Acts 13, 1, Acts 13, 1, like a robot. So we'll have to address this. So without further ado, let's get cracking. What are you going to do? Oh, I'm not losing anything. We've already had a conversation yet. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You're not going to do anything, are you? You woofed up. Yes, this is the boy. This is the sick person minded who sells out his own people. He sold out his Acts 13 1, humiliating for you. He thought he would come here and he had no chance, man. Acts 13 1, you beggar to the white man. Oh, bow before you, oh Englishman. We bow before for you and this is the epitome of the bowing the mr uncle thomas thomas how are you thomas are you the senior thomas are you yes okay so Mustafa, listen to me let's go to acts 13 1 first of all but if you want to have a reasonable conversation hang on let's no yes so let's go to acts chapter 13 verse 1 let's go to act to acts chapter 13 verse 1 which calls simeon with the n word it distinguished there's no there was no can i can i can i respond can i respond can i, can I there was no country called niger there was no country called niger at that time they they, they, they phoneticize the, the word later. The you get the word finger, singer, linger. You don't get it as a jur, do you? So they later phoneticize it for expediency. But Simeon was referred to with the N-word. That is total and utter humiliation. That is so when, like Muhammad, so No, 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 get to the point. Speak to Acts 13.1. Don't run away, you coward. Run to Acts 13.1. You're running. No, let's go, no. Let's go to 13. Let's get... Yes, the moment the Antichrist is right. exposed. The, the, so the Bible, well, this is madness. You're, cr you're, this, you're crazy, man. It's not speaking. The, Acts right. chapter 13, verse 1, called right. Simeon with the right. N word. Right. Acts 13, 1. Distinguishes Simeon the from the color of his skin. Later, so it was phoneticized. Later, it was phoneticized. Let me to that lady. Hey, man, hey. You don't want to speak to me? You don't want to speak to me? Acts 13, 1. No, but he's mad. He's mad. I can't speak to a madman. I can't speak to a madman. I can't speak to a madman. Night, listen, Acts 13 1, it calls Simeon with the N-word. That's the history of the word. I'm not here. I want to Lucifer. No, no, mister, listen to me. You're gone. You guys are gone. You guys are gone. Listen to me. I don't wanna Yeah, you're gone because you can't speak about these issues. You can't speak Acts 13. Why don't you want to deal with Acts 13 1? Why do you not want to deal with Acts chapter 13? See that means you're speaking to us, so we're not gonna be able to communicate. Well, clearly we must speak of Acts 13.1. What on earth is Acts 13.1 anyway? It's getting Mustafa so excited. Here's the Catholic Bible. The only Bible that contains the whole Bible. The Protestant Bible is like, for example, if you buy a packet of 20 cigarettes, but seven of them are missing. So if you're a smoker, you get what I mean. You're shortchanged with a Protestant Bible. The money you pay for a Catholic Bible, you're getting your money's worth. But you ought to ask for a refund when you buy a Protestant Bible. A digression. Acts 13.1 Now, in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manaean, a member of the court of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. Acts 13.1 
Who'd have thought so much heat could be generated from one verse which is just a list of names? Well, it's that one particular name. Simeon, who is called Niger, or Niger, or some other pronunciation. Forgive me if I don't give you that other possible pronunciation. But I do want the channel to stay up, a little while longer at least. But if I did give you that other pronunciation, which is so offensive to black people now, it wouldn't mean that it has the offensive connotation 2,000 years ago that it has now. It's simply a word, like all words pronounced a certain way, that can change meaning over time. Now, if one wants to say that the word today has the same meaning as it had 2,000 years ago, one is going to have to show that because that's a lot of years, a lot of water under the bridge. And the modern use of that word is just something that we've encountered in the last few hundred years. But, you know, you might be thinking, well, look, he said, Simeon called Niger, Niger. But there's a country called Niger. There's a, a region in West Africa, Niger, Nigeria. So isn't it just that? And this guy's saying, well, you know, there's no such place. But it doesn't really matter. What matters is we find out what all this is about. What's the significance of Simeon called Niger? Let's see. We're now looking at Craig Keener's monumental commentary on the Acts of the Apostles. It's in four volumes. And this is volume two. And it deals with that name, Simeon called Niger. It deals with every single name. It's massively detailed. So you can see down there, well actually now my um, screen is covering it, but take my word for it. Simeon called Niger is the heading. It says a reasonable surmise that Niger is in this case a nickname rather than a given name. It's reasonable to surmise that. And he goes on, now you can see at the top on the uh, right hand side. And it's, you translate it in English as Simeon the Black or Simeon the Dark. And he goes on to say, many scholars think that Simeon may have been an African or in many cases, more specifically, a North African Jew descended from African proselytes. So we can see that Niger means black and it's a nickname. But it doesn't mean that it is um, an insult. Further down, because it might not be what has been suggested so far, it says, if Niger is a Roman birth name rather than a nickname, it need not designate ethnicity. It was a common Roman name. But the name Simeon indicates that the leader here is also Jewish. So in fact, the suggestion that this is um, even an insulting name or even a nickname is not necessarily the case. You can see why I have to highlight only a small number of parts of this, otherwise it'd be quite an essay one is reading about Simeon the Col Niger. But if it is a Roman name, I just see at the top right, Kina is saying it leaves open the question, however, of his original ancestry. Kina comes away further down, as you can see, with the, the belief that it's more likely that it's a nickname. It says, if, as seems more likely, the name was a nickname, it may offer a significant pointer to complexion in a way that a birth name would not. We need not assume that Simeon Niger was Ethiopian, that is Nubian, to warrant the nickname Dark. So he may not have been Black African. And just the last 
part of this, which um, unfortunately you can't see properly. I'll read it. Colour was typically understood in relative terms. A practice retained much later in history. For example, Arabs considered themselves black compared with the Persians, who were red. But red, or white, compared with Africans, who they, the Arabs, considered black. And that's the end of his commentary on Simeon, uh, the uh, Simeon called Niger. It then goes on to Lucius of Cyrene, but we need to detain ourselves on every name here. There's absolutely nothing to suggest that there's any racial abuse in the, in the t term Simeon called Niger. It's just a reference, it's a descriptor. And so Mustafa the Muslim went off half-cocked, not really knowing what he's talking about. He must have got this from somewhere. Heaven knows what some Islamic nonsense is, is currently circulating around the internet. But they really ought to do their homework a bit better. Because it caused an awful lot of aggravation. All of it could have been avoided, but I don't think the Muslims want to avoid that, though. They want black people to hear that there's racism in the Bible. Because as we all know, Islam is not racist at all. Muhammad was not racist. He never did call black people raisin heads. He never did trade black slaves for half the price of white slaves. I did say, though, that there was the um, question which arose in this Hyde Park mayhem, in this Hyde Park, it's Hyde Park offshoot, Hyde Park spillover, this Stratford mayhem of slavery, again, in relation to the question of race. So I'll just go and find that and I'll pause for a moment and 